Welcome to another amazing week here at Experience Michiana. We have a lot to go through today. You can see behind me there's plenty of books. We're at the Heritage Meeting House in Mishawaka. You're going to see all that it has to offer, especially for those homeschooling families. We're also going to be checking out the Expo for Women. It's the 30th annual event. Really excited for that for a ladies night out. But first up, hope you like breakfast. It's just time for uh, visiting the Maple area as we head to the Maple Rose Sugar House. Kelly's going to show it all to you next. Today we're at Maple Rose Sugar House and they're going to tell us all about Michigan Maple Festival 2022. But before we do that, we thought we'd take you to where it all begins. So where are we headed? We're headed into the woods. <laughs> Hey, nice Hello. to meet you, Daniel. Nice to meet you. I'm Daniel. All right. Hey, nice to meet you. And who are you? Ashton. Hi, Ashton. Nice to meet you. So this is where it all begins because you're getting ready for this big maple festival. Yes. But it all starts here in the woods. Yes. So tell, tell us, because I, I believe this is a family operated business, right? Yep. So we started making syrup in 2011 mm -hmm. and it was just as a family thing. Something to do with the kids. We had trees in the front yard and we just started doing it because of that and it's slowly grown or fastly grown into we are producing right around 5,000 gallons of syrup a year ourselves. Now I don't know anything about that. Is that a lot? It sounds like a so lot. So we are the biggest maple syrup producer in southwest Michigan. Wow now it started with one tree? Yes. So can you do any tree? It has to be a specific tree. I'm from New York so, so you got to break it down for me. So. <laughs> Any maple tree can be tapped. So there's soft maples, hard maples, any of them can be tapped. It's just the sugar content between the different species of trees is different. All the trees in this woods are all sugar maple or hard maple trees, and that's what this tree is right here beside us. So you said the different trees, do they taste differently then? Does the syrup taste so different? So the syrup tastes the same. It just takes like a uh, sugar maple like this, it'll take about 40 gallons of sap to make one gallon of syrup. Wow. Where a soft maple could take 60, 70 gallons of sap to make a gallon of syrup. So it just requires more processing or boiling to get the finished product. Got it. Now, how do you do it? You're not hurting the trees, right? Because I'm one of the tree huggers. So okay. <laughs> we, we're tree huggers too. Okay. Every day, all day long, we're working in the woods. We want to save and preserve the tree for the lifespan of the tree because if I kill the tree, I kill my livelihood. Right, right. So we are using a quarter inch tap and drilling an inch and a half in. So we're using a substantially smaller tap and tap hole than anybody else does. Okay. And that works for us because of the whole system and how the whole system's built. So everything that we have from the tap all the way to the syrup going in a container is the most modern way that you can make syrup today. Right, so it, it's modern, it's, it's, when did this begin? Because this is fairly new, right? So this, this woods has been put in, or we installed this about seven years ago. Okay. So this woods is reaching the tubing in the woods. Every 10 years, we'll tear it out and install new just because you get a tree that's now big enough to tap you get trees that die, you get lots of dead trees that we'll cut out just to clean and maintain the woods to keep the woods in good health. Okay. So about every 10 years, we'll tear it apart and start over again. Well, if you can see, we see rows and rows and rows of trees. I don't know how far it goes, but how many, how many taps do you have? So in this woods, this is an 80 acre woods mm -hmm. and there's roughly 7,500 taps in this woods and all the sap from this whole woods is collected into these tanks. Oh. So there is roughly 232,000 feet of tubing in this woods to wow. get all the sap collected to one spot. Oh my goodness, and how long does it all take? When do you start the process? So collecting sap and making syrup is 100% weather dependent. If 
you don't have freezing and thawing, you can't collect sap. Oh. So as the tree freezes, it's sucking groundwater up into the branches of the tree. As it thaws, that water grabs the sugar and brings it back down the tree to feed the tree. So we're collecting the sap as it's coming back down the tree. Okay. And so on a big day, in a big day, like the perfect storm for being flooded with sap mm -hmm. is 20 degrees at night, so it freezes solid, and 50 degrees rain and wind will make the sap run as hard as it can possibly run, and that equals about three gallons of sap per tap in a 24 hour time period. Wow. Now I know that, that does the weather also predict kind of the production as well? Is, is the certain weather bring, you know, better syrup or more syrup? So the sugar content of the sap changes yearly, daily throughout the season. Mm -hmm. The more sunlight that you have throughout the summer, the more um, the leaves collect the sun and create the sugar in the tree. So the sugar is actually created in the summertime with sunlight. Okay. And it's stored in the branches in the top of the tree. And then in the wintertime is when the sap, or even in the fall, if it's freezing and thawing, you can actually collect sap and make syrup in the fall also if you want, but the season's much shorter. So that's why we all do it in the spring because it's a longer season and more predictable. Now you said that this is a family affair. I see you have your beautiful daughter with you and I hear you put all five kids to work. Yes, yeah, so <laughs> we have six kids and each one has their own thing that they like to do. So it's frustrating because the kids are still small they all love being out here, but as you can see, everything's so high up the tree, she's not tall enough to pound a tap in or drill a hole. So right now, she walks with us and she helps carry supplies or here, hold this. That's what the kids do right now in the woods. But mm -hmm. at the house, her favorite thing is helping her mom make in the maple suckers, the uh. candies, the cream, the sugar. So she gets to help do that. And then our oldest boy, he now collects the sap from the taps that we started on when we first started making syrup in 2011. So we have him set up with a little tractor and a wagon that he goes and collects his own sap and hauls it to me. And then he helps now run the evaporator making the syrup. Speaking of the evaporator, so it starts here, but now you have to take it back and it goes through a whole nother process. Yes, right. All right, well, that sounds great. Well, let's get back there and find out where we're going from here. Okay, all sounds right? good, let's thank you. It. All right, Daniel, so you brought all the sap back in here. This is the sugar house. And I have to say, if heaven had a scent, it would be this, because it smells really good in here. So when you bring it in here, what happens? So once the sap gets trucked back here, uh -huh. it goes through a reverse osmosis machine. And that's what this is. The purpose of this is to remove water. So every, a lot of people have a reverse osmosis machine in their house, mm -hmm. which gives you clean water. It takes out the impurities and gives you good clean water. Well, this is the same machine, just substantially bigger, and I use it backwards. Oh. Water is a byproduct to me, and all the impurities is all the sugar, the minerals that are in the sap. That's the impurities? Yes. Okay. So that's what I want to keep, and so we are removing 95% of the water with this machine. So we only have to boil for a little bit of time compared to if we didn't have this machine. So how much time would, does it take then? So we are able to process 4,800 gallons of sap an hour with this machine. Really? And so- Oh my gosh, that's a lot. The evaporator is evaporating about 450 gallons an hour. So if we didn't have the reverse osmosis machine, we'd have to have a line of these to do what this machine does. Wow, so maple sugar making has come a long way. Yes, <laughs> so this is the most modern reverse osmosis machine you can get, and this is the most modern maple syrup evaporator that you can get today. So it goes through this and then it goes into the evaporator, and, so now, and then what happens here? So now all the impurities that we took out, which is the sugar mm -hmm. and the minerals, that now flows into this, and this process is actually boiling the rest of the water off. Okay. So it's a constant flow of the concentrate, which is all your sugar, going in, and a constant flow of syrup coming off. And so here in just a minute, you'll mm -hmm. see it steaming, which it's boiling. And here in a minute, 
this will open up. This is the valve that right the here. finished product comes off of and give it here just a minute. And this is the finished product that's coming off right here. Oh, there here. it comes. Wow. So that's the process. Um, so I know, isn't there some maple sugar, uh, maple syrup that's lighter and some that's darker? Correct. So maple syrup has lots of different colors, lots of different flavors. Mm -hmm. And that all is based on what the tree gives you at that time. Sometimes it's light at the beginning of the season, generally it's light. And as the season progresses, it slowly gets darker. So how long is the season then? So the season is all based on the weather. The more freeze thaw cycles we have, the longer the season is. But generally it's January to March. To March. So what do you do for the rest of the year? So the rest of the year we package all of our syrup into quarts, pints, gallons, whatever we need that month for orders. So this syrup will actually get put into stainless steel 55 gallon barrels. Mm -hmm. And then we bring those out the rest of the year and can those into what we need for that month and make the sugars or the cream out of that. So speaking of that, so you actually have a store as well. Correct, we have a store that is open year round. We really don't have set hours. People just call and say, hey, we want to come get syrup today, or they just stop by. And most of the time, somebody is always here to show them the store. All right. Well, I'm not going to call you, but I want some syrup today. Okay. <laughs> and if you'd like, we can get a sample of this right here. You can get it hot off here and try that. It's always the best. Yeah, I'd love to. And you'll never get it any fresher than this. I would love to. Let me okay. get a taste here. And Daniel, I've heard that maple syrup is actually really healthy for you as well. Correct. So a lot of people that um, have diabetes can't have white sugar, but they can have maple syrup in moderation and it does not affect them near like what white sugar does. Oh, wow. I didn't and know so that. So you can also use maple syrup then in replacement of white sugar in cooking cookies or anything like that. And then it gives it that sweet taste, but also you get a slight maple flavor to it also. Oh, that's great. Okay, well, I'm so going to be greedy. I'm taking the big one. This is 200 degrees at the moment. Oh, so ooh. it might be a little warm. Some people can take it. Some people right, can't. So just be forewarned. Oh, I can take it. Okay. Oh, this is delicious. Oh, my gosh. Mm. Wow, this is very, very good. Oh my goodness, probably some of the best I've ever had, really. It's, it's always the best straight off yeah, the evaporator, it. whether it's this one or anybody else's. Well, I'm going to finish this, but I'm ready to go to That's the store, fine. too. That's fine. We can fill it back up. All also. right, let's, let's go. This okay. is so good. We're in the store, and I have to say, I have never been surrounded by so much maple syrup, but I also have to say, I am loving it. <laughs> this is great. You have so many different items, and I just want to point out that, you know, you had mentioned that there's fake maple syrup and people don't realize that there is and there's the real kind and there's a big difference between the two yeah so fake maple syrup is used high fructose corn syrup is used to make it and then it has maple flavoring added to it where real maple syrup is nothing added to this except what comes out of the tree so this is as pure of a product as you can get so it's just collect the sap boil it down and you have syrup and that what is what is in the container. And you have very unique items here too. Like one is maple hot sauce. Yes. I never would think of that. I'm sure it tastes really good. So we try to have lots of different items to showcase maple syrup. So people can use the hot sauce just like any other hot sauce, but at the end of it, you actually get a maple flavor with it. Right, and I see here you also have Cajun maples seasoning and garlic maple seasoning. Yes. So that is actually maple sugar, which you take the sap, boil it down, make syrup, and then you take the syrup and you boil it down even further and you get maple sugar. And then we add different seasonings to that to get a maple Cajun or a maple garlic seasoning. And we use uh, the maple garlic a lot on popcorn. Oh, that, yeah, Believe that it or not, great. it's actually really good on popcorn. It sounds odd, but it that's what we use it most on. No, it sounds great. Now the festival is taking place and it starts on March 19th. Tell yeah. us all about it and tell us about some of the events that you're going to be having. Okay, so on both weekends, we have free sugar house tours. So you'll be able to come into the sugar house, 
see how the syrup's made. Somebody will be in there explaining all the equipment that's in there and what it does. You'll be able to try syrup right off the evaporator. We'll have a small animal petting farm, so you'll actually be able to pet the animals, see the animals. We have a all-you-can-eat pancake breakfast. And yes. then in the afternoons, we do a maple lunch. So we have maple pulled pork, maple Ooh. brats. We do have our seasonings that you can put on French fries. We have um, a pioneer reenactment where you can see how syrup was made back in the French Indian um, Time war period. era. Mm -hmm. So um, one of the weekends we have Civil War reenactment group that will be doing demonstrations and kids will be able to get involved and do drills with them. We also have a talent show. Nice. And we're doing some different maple related games for families to participate and compete against other families also. Oh, and one of the things I heard you say is the pancake breakfast. Yes. Now that's going to be a big one. And I see some pancakes over there. Do yes. You so have some? <laughs> we have some pancakes that were just freshly made mm -hmm. and we have syrup that you just seen us make and that you got to try is right here. So now you can make it up your own plate and try it out. Let me try these pancakes. Oh my gosh, that is delicious. All right, so again, it starts March 19th. March 19th mm -hmm. and 20th and mm. March 26th and 27th. Wow, this is great. All right, guys, we'll see you here. Lots of pancakes and lots of maple syrup. Well, there's a wonderful space here in Mishawaka, the Heritage Meeting House, and I'm here today with Kelsey, the owner, hey. to talk about all the wonderful things that you have here to offer. <laughs> yeah, so we opened this space in September of 2021. Um, my husband and I looked at the community and said, this is something that we want for our family, um, and it didn't exist. And so mm -hmm. it, was, um, it was out of necessity because we're a homeschooling family and we wanted a space where we could get resources and offer the same thing to the community. So it's um, really the primary goal of this space. Yeah, it's absolutely. Really assisting the homeschool community. Absolutely, that's the ministry that we really feel God led us to. Um, and so we have a library that we open to the public. We have over 8,000 volumes of classic literature. It's something that we've curated so that you don't have to worry what your kids are gonna find. And you were saying, what exactly is classic literature? For those <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so we have more than just Shakespeare. Um, these are books, about 80% of our collection is pre-1970. Okay. So 1900 to 1970 is the golden age of children's literature. So these are books that have stood the test of time. You're gonna find them in a lot of the homeschool curriculums nowadays. A lot of classrooms still use these titles. And so we wanted to make them easily available to the public. So you pay a monthly or yearly fee, you come in, you have an online account, you can oh, check great. out, renewals holds everything. Like um, just like library. a regular library, but safe for kids. You're not gonna have to worry what your okay. family finds here. Okay. Um, so everything's been curated to be of the highest literary value. And I think that's something that you mentioned that you can really help with too, for those folks who are maybe contemplating going into yeah. homeschooling and what that might look like and not sure where to start. Exactly, so homeschooling has exploded. It went from about three million to about six, seven million now. And yeah. so there's a lot of families um, that are just not happy with what they're seeing in the public education system right now. And so I offer a curriculum consults. Uh, we can just come in okay. and sit down over a cup of coffee and we'll talk through what your kids need, um, specific learning struggles, what your schedule looks like. We have used homeschool curriculum for sale. Okay. We also have curriculum in our library that, you, that we can loan out. So our goal is to make um, homeschooling as accessible and as cheap as possible for families that are just starting and don't know what to do. Exactly, and I love that you're able to kind of consult people through that process and yeah. what it looks like so I think it's you know as a parent of multiple children I won't say <laughs> right, how many yeah. kids we have but like that's kind of terrifying All right. know where to start. Yeah exactly so that's our goal is our our passion in ministry is just to give parents options so even if you can't homeschool your child but you you're just not happy with where things are going we we help with advocacy and support okay. we're actually launching a nonprofit soon um, in conjunction with some of the things that we're doing to really give parents the resources that they need whether they can homeschool or not whatever educational arena God has put your family, we want to be a resource to help you get all the information that you need. Now, when can people access this space? When is when are your hours? Yeah, so we do have kind of crazy hours. Um, we are open Monday through Thursday from 4 to 8 p.m. So, and that's great too because you have a coffee shop here. So, for folks who want to yeah. get their coffee, <laughs> exactly on the way home from work, stop <laughs> in. Um, I'm here most days. I love to chat, so come find me. Okay. Um, so, Monday through Thursday, 4 to 8 p.m. On Friday, we're open 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. Okay. And on Saturday, 8 a.m. to 4 p.m.
Okay. And, and closed on Sunday. And I love too that you actually have some meeting spaces available for people yeah. too. So if they want to do some co-op time yep. or even just some meeting space. Absolutely. So we have three classrooms that we are um, that we offer for reservation. It's just five dollars an hour. Um, they seat all different sizes of groups. We can accommodate up to a hundred people in a full facility rental oh, after gosh. hours. So, so we like done, a baby shower. Yeah, here baby or showers, like that. wedding receptions, oh, wedding rehearsals, yeah. all kinds of things. So um, we love that, and we have a banquet menu that we can offer with all of our cafe goods and so but our classrooms we rent out um, by the hour and you can come in with your Bible study your co-op if you're a tutor and you just need a place to host your class yeah. um, if you have an art that you want to offer to to the community we've had people offer art lessons in our space oh, um, nice. so our idea. goal is just to get the community into this space it's a safe place for kids yeah. and for people to come together and just slow down mm -hmm. um, we want you to come in and grab a coffee and bagel and a book and just relax and you don't have to be a part of the homeschool community no. to come and grab some Not food. at all. Can we go check out the Absolutely. cafe? Absolutely. Okay. <laughs> Well, Kelsey, now we're over here in the yeah. cafe, and this is great. You guys have these bagels straight from New York City. Yeah, so we fly these in straight from New York. They come to us fresh. There's no preservatives. Um, they are true New York City bagels. So if you've ever been to the East Coast. Which I never have. Yeah, <laughs> then so this you is get a like, taste of it so here. I'm a little taste of it Yeah, today. <laughs> absolutely. These are completely unique, not like any bagel you've ever tasted oh, in the Midwest. Okay. They're addictive, complete, uh, to be candid. Um, <laughs> so we are just launched our bagel sandwiches. We have about three delicious. or four options. Yeah. yeah. Um, so this is our new bagel sandwich. You can come in, um, you know, breakfast, lunch, dinner. No, no judgment here. I'm not um, going to take a bite. This is like too big for my mouth. <laughs> Um, so yeah, come on in and try these. We have about three different flavors that we're going to be launching in the next week oh, of bagel nice. sandwiches. These are brand new. Okay. Um, but we also feature Tacoa coffee. It's the los ro oh. roasted locally here. Um, and so we... Is that what this yes. is here too? So okay. this is our own unique blend through them. That roasted in Mishawaka. That's yeah. awesome. So this is amazing, amazing roaster that we've so been working So as much as with. you can, like locally yeah. sourced. Yeah. Again, it goes back to our mission of we want to support the local community. Yeah. Whether that is through homeschooling, effort educational efforts or through um, local entrepreneurs and so we feature we, we like to dub this a micro local cafe so yeah. all of our coffee is roasted about three miles away all of our dairy products come from about eight miles away we use oh, crystal wow. springs creamery and you have vegan options too we I know do. This, is, yes. this is my vegan hot chocolate here <laughs> we do have all of our drinks are available as vegan all of our bagels are vegan we have vegan chocolates we have allergy oh, friendly baked treats and so our goal is to make this a comfortable place for people even with dietary restrictions. Absolutely. And you also have a lot of like home goods and things yeah. for sale too. Yeah. So we wanted to kind of deck this out and round it out again, supporting the community. So we have about eight to 10 local artists that we work with. Um, we have a homeschool mom that does all of our pottery for us. Um, we have some gorgeous <sighs> gifts from her. We have someone down north of Indianapolis that makes all of our leather goods and bags. Oh, great. We have candles from Warsaw, Indiana. We have jewelry um, from just right down the road here. We have about three or four different jewelry makers that we work with. So it's like, you can, I mean, you can get everything done in here. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So come in. We do gift baskets. You can come in and do a little bit of shopping. Um, so yeah, we just, again, our mission is to support local efforts. And so yeah. we want to be a hosting facility for whatever adventure, creative project you have. It really is a great way to bring the community together. And I know you and I were kind of talking in this particular space. We're right outside of Bethel College. Yeah. There really isn't a space like this in this area. No. So we are just north of Bethel. This is the first of its kind that we know of in the Midwest. Um, we don't know of any other local preservation libraries. The next closest yeah. is about five, six hours away. Um, and for this kind of space where we just want you to come in and slow down and mm -hmm. get help and resources and just unplug, meet with friends, use our meeting space, buy our local goods, eat our bagel sandwiches. <laughs> um, yeah, Which we can do these all day long. <laughs> <laughs> so this is totally unique to this area. It's Absolutely. not something we, uh, my husband and I had ever seen done before. We had a dream and we knew what, what we wanted and we what we wanted for ourselves and our family and That's so amazing. we decided to build it well I'm so glad that you were able to put this together here for our community it really Thank is you. an awesome space to bring the community together where can people get more information yeah so go to heritagemeetinghouse.com that's where you'll find all the information about this space um, as well as the heritageco.net okay. and that will direct you to all of our homeschool work all Great. of the things and advocacy that we're doing for education in the community okay awesome well thanks so much for showing us around yeah, Kelsey good luck with everything <laughs> thank you well, ladies, it is time to get those boas out because we have a great night for you coming up here in Michigan at the South Bend, uh, at the Century Center in downtown Absolutely. South Bend. This is an amazing event, the Expo for Women, and this is a big year for you guys, celebrating your 30th year. <laughs> yeah, we are. It's amazing. I started the event when I was like two. 
No. <laughs> <Just joking. laughs> right. <laughs> It was actually run by a nonprofit organization in South Bend up to 2008, uh -huh. and at that point, then I took possession of it, I guess you'd say. Okay. And so we've been celebrating the women in our community ever since, and it's just such an amazing event. It's a great time to get women together mm -hmm. and bring women business owners here and women who work for businesses and also the men too they come and they market to the ladies we support nonprofit organizations okay. and help people grow their business network have fun right celebrate the ladies bring the kids yeah. as a matter of fact i um, when i moved to south bend i bought my daughter to the event in a little stroller she's <laughs> 10 months old and as i said i did I too know, <laughs> i know it was really great and now she's 32 and she has a baby and she brings her baby in a stroller so we have a great um people come support our event and they come every year they just love it it really is empowering it's an empowering event for women absolutely it is now when people come there's a number of vendors that are going to be here what can they expect well, one of the things we're doing, we're doing a Michiana Sharks a pitch contest for women entrepreneurs and men too mm -hmm. that come out and they pitch their business and then they win a prize. Ooh, How exciting is that? That's exciting. They do, yes. and then you need to be here at 2.30 and we announce the winner at 4. So we're very excited. We also have a whole stage presentation going on all day long. That's starting awesome. At when is the event happening? It's on March 22nd, which is a Tuesday. Tuesday, okay. And it's at 2 o'clock, starts at 2 o'clock and goes till eight o'clock. We have 60 vendors that are gonna be here. Wow. And um, at five o'clock starts our ladies night out. Oh, so all right, that's how we got party. our bonus, yeah. ready for that. We have yes. our cocktail <laughs> party uh, for charity. Okay, and now what is the cost to get in? It's five dollars at Ooh. the door, but if you go to our website, you can get your ticket for two dollars and fifty cents. Okay. And some people are wondering, since we haven't, we weren't able to do the expo and is it 2020 or I don't even know whatever, what year it is. Whatever it was. <laughs> so people bought tickets for that. So if you bought tickets for that, you know what? We're going to honor them. Oh, that's so awesome. So you Great. just come to the door and you let us know that you bought tickets for that event. If you have them, then you can just present them there. If you don't have them, you know, well, we're going to let you in anyway. Absolutely. Well, I think these are super fun. It's fun. Yes. And we have lots of shopping, so be sure and Ooh, bring your checkbook. Lots of shopping. Okay. Lots of shopping. Lots of shopping to do. So you can get all that done. You can get your beauty supplies mm -hmm. here. You can have yeah. fun, fashion show, cocktails. It's going to be a great evening. Absolutely. And you can come stay all day. Awesome. Well, we hope that you'll see us there again Tuesday, March 22nd. Uh-huh. Absolutely. Perfect at the Sensory Center. See you we'll there. See you then. Lots of stuff to check out here in Michiana. You don't want to miss all that there is to offer. And if you have things that you want to share with us, maybe some places for us to check out, some local food locations. I'm always game for those. Dessert's my favorite. Make sure you share those with us. We'd love to show you what Michiana has to offer. Thanks for joining us. See you next week. Experience Michiana is made possible in part by the Community Foundation of St. Joseph County and the Indiana Arts Commission, which receives support from the State of Indiana and the National Endowment for the Arts. This WNIT local production has been made possible in part by viewers like you. Thank you.